Hello once again, and thanks for tuning in to the Word of the Day podcast. This show comes to you, as always, pre-recorded from the cozy confines of the RAV4 studios. And as your host, I, Jamie Silva, will attempt to pleasantly explain another useful word. Today's word is a verb, monger. And in my opinion, monger just means to sell, or more accurately, to attempt to sell, since successfully moving product isn't guaranteed. If you're mongering, you're sort of like a peddler, which means you should picture someone standing in a busy thoroughfare or at a booth in an outdoor marketplace, loudly proclaiming the excellence of their wares and probably handing out samples to passers-by. Also, those people roaming the stands at sporting events, selling pretzels or hot dogs or beer or whatever to the fans, those people are mongering delicious stadium food. You could also say they're hawking stadium food, by the way. Um, hawk, spelled just like the bird, and meaning essentially the same thing as petal or monger. And I want to emphasize here the standing outside and walking around aspect of mongering. You are not peddling, mongering, or hawking if you just, like, have a store and kind of hope people come inside to buy stuff. No, you've got to be trotting around, physically carrying whatever you're selling in order to qualify. Or at least be stationed outdoors in some sort of small booth or stand. Thus, someone sitting in an office, even if they're wheeling and dealing and signing millions of dollars worth of tuna deals with major retailers and tuna salad conglomerates around the world, that person isn't a fishmonger or a tuna monger. Likewise, just because someone owns a bakery doesn't make them a breadmonger. But if that baker is, you know, out there on 10th Avenue with a tray looking for customers and shouting about how fluffy these here cinnamon rolls are, then they are a breadmonger. And again, sitting at a table at a farmer's market, uh, I guess that qualifies, but only just. Now, checking in with the Google definition of monger, uh, it goes like this, quote, denoting a dealer or trader in a specified commodity, unquote. Hmm. Well, first the good news, this definition does echo the idea of a seller, right? A seller of a particular product. But the bad news is that Google doesn't define monger as a verb at all. Rather, they have it listed as a combining form, which is like a chunk of a word that never stands on its own, like para in paratrooper or mal in malfunction. Now, this may sound like an embarrassing error on my part, but I can explain. It is a fact that monger is a verb, and I actually did find a different dictionary with a verb form of monger way down on the list of meanings, and it was defined there as pedal, which I should actually go ahead and define as well, because I don't think I've directly done that yet. To pedal, and that's spelled P-E-D-D-L-E, -E, by the way, not P-E-D-A-L, as in pedaling a bicycle, um, this means to travel around toting stuff for sale. And as further evidence that monger works as a verb, it comes from this Latin word, mongo, which is spelled just like mango, and means trader or dealer. And of course, a trader is one who trades. Now, I will absolutely grant that nowadays, while monger is part of many words, it basically never stands on its own as a verb, even though it is one. You wouldn't refer, for example, to someone mongering homemade shaved ice in the park. Rather, you would call them a shaved ice monger. See, you can just slap monger on the end of a product, and suddenly, it refers to someone who is peddling that product. Most often, they're peddling food. But even then, there are just a few types of food sellers that have received the label of monger over the years. These, according to my research, are fishmongers, cheesemongers, and costermongers, who sell fresh fruits and vegetables on the street out of a pushcart. But you shouldn't stop there. Monger is versatile, you see. It can theoretically apply to sellers of many sorts of wares, and it's up to you to create new forms. Hot dog monger? Sure. Falafel monger? Absolutely. Coffee monger? Without a doubt. The possibilities, while not endless, are certainly many, so see what you can come up with. Keep in mind, though, that although monger can apply to many types of goods, especially foods, it's basically never applied to services. The reason being that you can't exactly carry a service around the street for people to purchase. That's why you'll never hear about, like, manicure mongers or financial planning mongers. Stuff like that is too intangible. It just doesn't work. Intriguingly, even though services are too intangible to monger, some things are apparently so intangible that, for some reason, monger makes sense once again. Consider the word scaremonger, which means, quote, a person who spreads frightening or ominous reports or rumors, unquote. 
And this definition doesn't mention it, but the connotation is that the frightening rumors getting spread around are baseless, and the person spreading them is doing so for their own profit or just because they like stirring up trouble. If we break down the word scaremonger, it's obviously composed of two parts, scare and monger. Likewise, its close cousin, fearmonger, is composed of fear and monger. Literally, both of these words would mean to sell fear, like to have as your business the production and sale of scariness. Figuratively, this is like going out into the street and being like, fears for sale, ice cold fears for sale, get your alarmism right here, fresh stories of doom and gloom both locally sourced and imported, and as a limited time offer, buy one exaggerated threat to you, your loved ones, or your way of life, and get a second for free while supplies last. Once again, all that is figurative, though that is more or less what newspaper boys used to do back in the day when they'd actually sell the daily papers out on the street. They certainly weren't going around shouting like, all is basically fine, nothing exciting or scary happening that we know of, and certainly nothing that affects you, so have a great day. Like, those newspaper boys, they wouldn't sell a single copy. Now, you might think, well, so what if some people out there are peddling or mongering fear? Who would buy it? The answer is nearly everyone. Horror and outrage and fright are hot commodities. And there is this cynical slash completely true saying in the news business that if it bleeds, it leads. And the idea here is that if you have footage of like some terrible crime scene or an accident or people in distress generally, you got to put that at the very top of the newscast as the lead story, right as the urgent intro music is ending and the anchors finish saying in serious but weirdly enthusiastic tones, Hi, I'm Tim and this is Lisa. Welcome to the channel. Channel 7 Evening News, where we have some disturbing stories to feature tonight that you do not want to miss. The thing is, if you're like most people, and you may not be, but still, you probably don't want to miss those disturbing stories. It's just human nature. So stations are incentivized to air them. Then lots of people tune in, the ratings go up, the advertisers are happy, and everyone wins. Except, of course, whoever was bleeding or in distress in the first place. So to sum up, insofar as fear-mongering is a business, you can be assured it is quite profitable. It's a similar idea for the word scandal-monger, which, no surprise, is someone who sells or circulates scandals. Here, think of tabloids, whose business model relies on pumping up and describing in great detail all manner of celebrity mishaps and squabbles and miscellaneous gossip. Other people's drama and bad decisions and general weirdness are deeply fascinating to many, and if the people in question are some combination of rich, attractive, and as seen on TV, the public's appetite is tough to satisfy. I think this scandalmonger idea is behind the second, sort of subsidiary definition of this root word that we're talking about, monger, which goes like this, quote, a person who attempts to stir up or spread something that is usually petty or discreditable. Discreditable, by the way, refers to things that damage a person's reputation. So here, think back to episode 20, in which we discussed the phrase noise about, meaning to spread information or rumors about in society. While those rumors don't necessarily have to be scandalous or scurrilous, they very often are, which is why scandal mongers, or gossip mongers as they're also called, are always noising things about. The pettier and the more reputation ruining, the better. Now, I don't say all this about tabloids and TV news and whatnot as some sort of high-minded media criticism, by the way, or at least not exactly. Like most things, the blame can be laid squarely at the feet of humanity at large. Fearmongers, scandalmongers, and the like are meeting genuine consumer demand, and if fear and scandal sell, you will find folks out there selling those things. Simple as that. Now, switching gears. Monger reminded me of this children's story that I took great delight in as a child called Caps for Sale, and it's the story of a hat seller, or I should say a cap monger, who walked around with a bunch of caps stacked up on top of his head, calling out, Caps for Sale, 50 cents a cap. One day, however, this cap monger got into a curious predicament, and the incident upon which this charming children's tale is based first off apparently actually happened, and second, it was originally recorded in a newspaper, the Wilmington Sentinel of North Carolina, on January 8th, 1789. The news bulletin, which I have mildly edited for clarity, goes like this, quote, According to a person just returned from the Labrador coast, which is on the northeast edge of Canada, by the way, the imitative faculty of monkeys seems to exceed everything short of human. 
A sailor, having a number of red woolen caps to sell to the natives there, went on shore for that purpose. His way to a settlement lay through a forest that was very copiously inhabited by the species above mentioned. Uh, and Jamie here once again, this refers to the monkeys. It being midday, the sailor put a cap on his head, and laying the others by his side, he determined to take a little repose under the shade of a plantain tree. To his utter astonishment when he awoke, from the example he had given his imitative observers, that is the monkeys once again, of the use of his caps, he beheld a number of them upon the heads of the monkeys in the trees round about, while the wearers, again the monkeys, were chattering in an unusual manner. Finding every attempt to regain his caps fruitless, at length, in a fit of rage and disappointment, and under the assumption that the one cap he had left was not worth selling anyway, the sailor pulled it from his head and, throwing it upon the ground, exclaimed, Here, take it. But he had no sooner done so than to his great surprise, the observant monkeys did the same, i.e. threw all their caps on the ground, by which means he regained his property. Unquote. What I just read, I remind you, is not the text of the actual children's book, though you are free to read this account to your kids at bedtime instead, if you want. Okay, it is now time to get some examples of monger in ordinary conversation or writing. Example number one. Terry dismissed as senseless fear-mongering his sister's protestations that if he poured so much maple syrup on his pancakes, there would be none left for her. Example number two. I love food truck day, said Ruby, looking around the parking lot to see what the options were. Let's see here. We had Korean slash Peruvian fusion last week, so why don't we check out the taco monger this time? Example number three. It was a sweltering day at the ballpark, with temperatures reaching into the upper 90s and high humidity to boot. The fans grumbled a little, but the beer mongers were very excited and anticipated record sales. Example number four comes from the book The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Quote, According to the reports of the most talented gossip mongers, those who, in every class of society, are always in haste to explain every event to their neighbors, the young gentleman concerned was of a good family, a prince, fairly rich, weak of intellect, but a democrat, and a dabbler in the nihilism of the period. Okay, that is it for the examples, but before we go, I want to leave you with one more type of monger that I came across in my research, and that is a word monger. And when I saw this, at first I thought, like, how nice, a peddler of words, like, that's kind of what I am. But, as it turns out, wordmonger is defined as follows, quote, a writer or speaker who uses words pretentiously or with careless disregard for their meaning, unquote. Well, ouch, that is honestly pretty hurtful. So, if you don't want your friends to call you a wordmonger, the solution, of course, is to listen to this show, which will allow you to use words, even the cooler ones, the fancier ones, judiciously and precisely, and with full knowledge of both their meanings and connotations. Well, that'll do it for us today. This has been the Word of the Day podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't hesitate to send us a missive at wotdpodcast at gmail.com if you ever want to suggest a word or just tell us what you think of the show. For now, this is your host, Jamie Silva, saying so long from the Rav4 Studios. We hope you enjoyed the program and we'll see you next time. <laughs>